So what attracted me to the natural sciences and engineering was I kind of always did sciences growing up. So my parents were biologists, so we kind of always had science in the background, microscopes at the house, things like that. But they never really forced it on us, but we did science museums, science fair projects, all those type of things. So I always chose to take those classes in middle school and high school, so I always was up to date and could choose that as a career if I wanted to. So then when I got to college, I decided that studying sciences was the right thing. So that's why I chose chemistry. Um, but towards the end of undergrad, I decided that I wanted to apply what I was learning since I was kind of getting the basic theories and really apply it more. And that's how I chose engineering and got involved in engineering. So my research agenda or interest and expertise is studying water quality. And I also look at water treatment and um, a little bit of wastewater treatment and the fate and transport of pollutants in the environment. And so what we're trying to do is determine how we can remove pollutants, which are things we don't want in our water or in our environment, and how we can clean those up and treat them for future generations or for our immediate use um, for drinking water, things like that. So we want to remove metals from the water um, because metals are cancer causing. A lot of the metals such as lead, mercury, arsenic, um, things like that cause cancer or other health issues like neurological disorders. And so if you drink too much of this, then you're going to have problems and that's what we want to try to avoid. So a current project I have is from the National Science Foundation, which is the NSF, and they fund our um, work. And what we're using is nanomaterials to remove um, pollutants such as metal from the water. So what that means means is nanomaterials are nano-sized um, particles that are less than 100 nanometers. So if you think about the width of your hair, so if you take a single hair strand and you think about it, that's about 500 times larger than the particles that we use. So we're using these nanomaterials to attach metals to them in the water so that we can take the metals out of the water so it's safe to drink. And these metals get in the water from all different types of reasons, from cars, um, from fertilizers, from mining industry, and um, from e-waste. So that's probably the one you're most familiar with. Your cell phones, your fancy TVs, and all of that have metals in them. And so if you just throw them into the landfill, there's a chance that they'll get into the environment and then we have to treat them for drinking later. So we have two main goals when we're looking at this project. We're trying to figure out what nanomaterials are the best for us to use to remove the metals. And then also, can we reuse them and regenerate them is the word that we use so that we can be sustainable in our treatment practice. So to for the first goal, we use different types of methods. Um, we call it a batch system, and what it is is just really a big liter container that we put the contaminated water in, and then we add the nanoparticles to, and we test various um, concentrations of the materials or weight of the nanoparticles. And then we look at the effect of things like pH, um, the effect of salts and other materials, and how that affects how the metals absorb. So we do systematic studies that we use um, to understand which materials are the best. And we focused on metal oxide nanomaterials, so they're a metal with some type of oxygen around them. And we've looked at four different kinds, um, two iron oxides, hematite and magnetite. And magnetite's kind of interesting because it's magnetic, so it, it was kind of a neat engineering um, um, project that we had. And then we also looked at titanium dioxide and aluminum oxide. So we studied all these different nanomaterials to figure out the best one. And then the second part, the regeneration and the reuse of the materials, what we do is we then take the nanomaterials that have attached the metals, and then we test um, the water after we remove the nanomaterials, and we figure out how much of the metal is left so we know if we've actually treated the water or not. And then once we do that, we take those nanomaterials that have the metals attached, and we put them in a different solution, such as a very acidic solution, and what it does is it causes the metals to release, so a chemical reaction happens, and then we can reuse those nanoparticles again instead of having to create more material. And the idea is we want to reuse these over and over so we minimize the waste that we're doing in the treatment. Some of the main conclusions or findings that we've had is we found that the best nanomaterials of the four that we've studied are the titanium dioxide. They work very efficiently, very quickly. In a matter of minutes, we can remove these metals from the water. Um, so that's what we found. And we've also compared it to other traditional water treatment um, sorbents is what we call those type of materials. And we found that ours produces much better results than some of the other ones out there. So we have the potential of creating a really good um, water treatment technology. 
The other thing that we found is we're understanding the mechanisms that are going on to attach these metals to the nanoparticles. When we understand those scientific mechanisms, then it allows us to design better water treatment technologies. And so in doing the basic science, it helps us do the engineering later, which has come up with a really good treatment technology. And then the other thing we've learned is that we can regenerate and reuse them. So for 10 or more cycles, we can continue to absorb, is the scientific word, and desorb um, the metals from the nanomaterials. And this allows us to have a more sustainable and expensive treatment as we continue in this project. So the long-term goal is to have um, potentially commercialized the treatment technology, or also another long-term goal is particularly for developing countries. So in developing countries, it's not very feasible to put in a whole big water treatment system due to the technology that they have. So what this could do is create at-home systems that people could use that are relatively inexpensive and easy for them to use to have safe drinking water. Because about 1.1 billion people in the, in the world do, still do not have access to safe drinking water. And so this is still a grand challenge that um, the um, major engineering division kind of sees that we need to work on fixing. And so this is also why we focus on water treatment is to, in essence, help people.